Hey everybody, Arnaldo here broadcasting from Fidelio's Frequency. Welcome to my channel. Some of you may have noticed over the course of the last week that I uploaded a video on my channel, a small, a short teaser video about something that was coming on May 13th. And today is the 13th and today is the premiere of a new series that I would like to launch on my channel called The Sun Shines Out of Our Behinds. Ever since I started my channel about five months ago, I always had the intention of featuring some kind of content uh, regarding the artists that I care about the most. And among my top three artists of all time is The Smiths. Uh, to round out my top three, I would have to name uh, David Bowie and uh, The Beatles. But unlike those other two acts, the Smiths hold a very special place in my heart, uh, mostly because I got to experience uh, the music of the Smiths uh, from their second single onwards uh, until the end of their career as it was being released. And those were my high school years, uh, very formative years for me as a person, my personality, and also my musical taste and my musical sensibility. So it's quite obvious for me to rank them among my top three uh, favorite artists of all time. So what better uh, occasion than to kick off a series dedicated to the Smiths, if none other than the 40th anniversary, this very day of May 13th, of the release of their first single, Hand in Glove. You can probably see behind me uh, various other uh, configurations and formats of the single, but this is the very first um, pressing of the single. Here is the front and the back with um, the Manchester address and a little bit, there you go, a little bit more about that. Um, later in the video. So I wanted to touch upon uh, the genesis of Hand in Glove and the release and everything revolving around it. I won't quite yet get into uh, the formation of the Smiths um, and the initial period of uh, the songwriter uh, collaboration between Johnny Marr and Morrissey. Maybe that will be in a future video. But I can say that Hand in Glove was not the first song that uh, Johnny Marr and Morrissey wrote together. Uh, I believe The Hand That Rocks the Cradle and Suffer the Children, which are both featured on the Smiths' uh, debut album, were the first songs that they actually uh, wrote together. Hand in Glove only came about, I want to say, six months into uh, their initial uh, collaboration or their songwriting partnership. And it was written uh, towards the end of January of 1983. And I will start, I will quote throughout this series and in this video especially, um, excerpts or uh, stories from both Johnny Marr's autobiography as well as Morrissey's autobiography and a very, very insightful tome, I like to call it, uh, called Mazapedia by uh, Simon Goddard. And in Johnny Marr's uh, autobiography, uh, Johnny tells the story of how he wrote uh, or the circumstances surrounding the um, composition of Hand in Glove. Well, it was, he was visiting his parents on a Sunday uh, afternoon, uh, late January sometime, when he picked up an old guitar that was lying around and started strumming and playing some chords and some tunes and until his girlfriend at the time, who then became his wife, Angie, um, noticed a certain chord progression that he was onto and said, that's really sounds good. Um, after a while, uh, as the song was evolving and the riff was evolving, Johnny thought that um, in the fleeting moment, he may forget about it by the time he would reconvene with the other band members to for a rehearsal or something. 
So there was no tape recorder lying around at his parents' house. So he asked Angie to drive him over to Morrissey's house, who he knew had a tape recorder. Uh, so during the ride over to Morrissey's house, uh, Johnny kept strumming along and playing the tune. Um, and at one moment, Angie also suggested, uh, try making it sound a little bit more like Iggy Pop. So uh, Johnny Marr tells a story of how he started changing the way he was playing the riff, uh, maybe slowing it down a little bit <clears throat> until they arrived at Morrissey's house, who greeted them with surprise, um, wasn't expecting them. But they darted up to Marcy's room and played, uh, Johnny played the uh, chord progression or the tune on a, a tape recorder that Marcy had uh, there. And the story then goes uh, further as to saying that, um, I believe this was in the uh, Mazapedia uh, book, where um, after Johnny Marr left, within the next two hours, uh, Marcy uh, wrote the lyrics uh, to the song. Now, uh, since we're talking about the lyrics of the song, I guess I'll, we'll get into the meaning or uh, the supposed meaning of uh, the lyrics of Hand in Glove. Well, mo many have always seen Hand in Glove as the um, manifesto of the Smiths, more like a romantic manifesto, uh, where you have uh, the center of the song is this relationship. Um, could be a friendship relationship or a love story. Uh, where the main character who's telling the story is committed to this relationship um, almost in a devotional type of way um, that, however, a relationship is the person in, in the, um, in the uh, song is saying how uh, most likely the relationship will not last. It'll be a brief relationship, but nonetheless, I am totally dedicated to protecting you and to being by your side. And that is really what it seemed to be prophetic because within five years, the Marcy and Mar relationship or partnership um, disbanded. Uh, many have seen Hand in Glove as being the representation of the relationship between Johnny Marr and uh, Morrissey. Uh, relationship, friendship relationship, songwriting partnership, I don't believe there was any kind of romance involved. Um, but uh, to touch upon also a few of the influences that Morrissey may have had in writing uh, what he said uh, or his intention was um, a song that would be searingly poetic as well as jubilant, which was, according to him, a very hard task to achieve. Um, some of the influences uh, that have been noticed uh, especially uh, starting off with um, Morrissey's favorite lyric, uh, which is hidden by rags. Uh, it's a theme that was often used in uh, uh, one of Morrissey's idols songs, um, that is uh, uh, Sandy uh, Shaw, who later would end up collaborating with the Smiths and actually singing uh, on an EP, the very same song, Hand in Gloves. But furthermore, the final lyric is definitely um, inspired by a Leonard Cohen song um, that was interpreted initially by uh, Buffy St. Marie uh, under the name of the song at the time was Bells, but Leonard Cohen uh, revisited that song calling it um, Take This Longing. And the line in question is, uh, everything depends upon how Near You Stand to Me, which in uh, Leonard Cohen's version is Everything Depends Upon How um, uh, Near You Sleep to Me. And as I was saying uh, previously, um, the final lyric, uh, which reads, um, I'll probably never see you again, which is repeated actually a few times by Morrissey towards the end of the song, is definitely uh, a clear uh, inspiration from one of Morrissey's favorite uh, playwrights, um, Sheila Delaney, um, the playwright of A Taste of Honey. Uh, she's also actually featured on two of the Smiths uh, covers, uh, the 12 inch single of Girlfriend in a Coma, as well as the US compilation, um, Louder Than Bombs. <clears throat> so um, a few more additional facts about um, Hand in Glove and 
uh, the single itself. It was recorded uh, in February, uh, towards the end of February, um, thanks to uh, Joe Moss, who lit, was a friend, uh, provided them a rehearsal space, but also provided them the budget to go into the studio to record this song, a budget of 225 pounds. Uh, they entered into uh, Strawberry uh, Studios in Manchester. And uh, within three takes, they were able to get a final take. And that is what we hear on the record, apart from a, a retake of a vocal uh, that happened a week later uh, by Morrissey, who felt that he could uh, significantly improve on the initial vocal. While the group was mixing the uh, single, Johnny Marr had a brilliant idea to um, add a harmonica part, uh, which was not originally recorded. So the other overdub was uh, the beginning and the ending part of the harmonica piece in Hand and Glove. Hand and Glove also is featured on the debut album by the Smiths. Uh, it was in initially, uh, the Smiths uh, teamed up with producer Troy Tate for the aborted sessions of the uh, songs of the first album, and they attempted also a retake, a, a remake of uh, Hand in Glove. And when it came to select a new producer, which was John Porter, uh, with whom they uh, recorded the songs that appear on the first album, on the debut album, uh, they did not redo uh, hand in glove but john porter uh, just simply remixed it providing it instead of a um fade in and a fade out which is on the single that was released uh, uh he provided a abrupt start and a definite uh ending to the song and also uh, mixed morrissey's vocals a little bit up front and provided just a more uh, a more a clearer soundscape of the instruments in the song. Morrissey in hindsight said that um, the grit and the rawness of the Smiths um, really was a bit uh, muted in the version that ended up on the debut album. Uh, the version that appears on the single is um, probably the best version uh, of Hand in Glove. It, Hand in Glove is my favorite Smith song for probably all the reasons that I just um, cited. I believe it captures the essence uh, of the Smiths. It really is a statement to um, not only musically, uh, their melodies, their arrangements, but also um, a lyrical statement from what the Smiths were all about. Um, unfortunately, the uh, single was not very successful. It only um, peaked at 124 on the UK pop chart. And um, the B-side of um, Hand and Glove is Handsome Devil. Uh, this, as you can see here, was recorded um, at the Hacienda. Um, it was directly taken from the mixing desk uh, on the uh, third gig that the Smiths ever played there. Um, and I believe that was on February 4th. Uh, this version that is on uh, Hand in Glove single uh, is not available anywhere else. They did re-record Handsome Devil through the, Peel, uh, the John Peel sessions, and it is featured on Hatful of Hollow, but that's probably uh, the subject or the topic of um, a whole other video. Um, I did want to touch upon uh, something that's very important um, in the uh, career of the Smiths, um, and that would be uh, the artwork. Uh, Morrissey uh, personally curated uh, the artwork of every single, every 12 inch, uh, every album, every compilation that the Smiths have ever released. And he took great care in selecting images of either models or mostly actors. Like again, I just said, um, uh, Sheila Delaney, who is a playwright, is also featured on two of the Smiths covers. And on this cover, uh, which was taken by Jim French. There is uh, the model, uh, the cover star, uh, as it's quoted here, uh, is uh, George O'Mara. And the interesting thing about the Hand in Glove single is that it's the only single that was released by the Smiths um, 
during their um, activity, I'd have to say, uh, that has the title written on the front cover. All of the other Smith's uh, covers do not have, uh, the singles um, and 12 inch singles do not have any uh, titles on them, except for a reissue of William, It Was Really Nothing, which I believe came after um, the group uh, disbanded, which does have uh, a title on there. And the image on here, uh, like I said, uh, was by Jim French. Morrissey came across this by a uh, compilation or collection uh, of images by Margaret Walter called the uh, male nude. And the interesting thing is right up here, it seems like the model has some kind of birthmark. In reality, uh, that's just a stain, or maybe it was intentionally placed there um, in making the artwork because uh, the original uh, picture does not show that. And uh, one last thing to touch upon um, for the Smiths is, uh, or I would say for every release that they've ever put out on vinyl, the Smiths have always had uh, some kind of uh, message or uh, lyric quoted in the dead wax of uh, each record. And for the first one, uh, Morrissey picks uh, a line that he sings in um, Hand and Glove, uh, and the line is, Kiss My Shades. Uh, Johnny Marr was uh, offered the choice of selecting the um, Dead Wax inscription for the side B, and he cleverly came up with Kiss My Shades, too. So that's just another uh, fun fact or trivia for those who care. I'm actually thinking of in one of the future videos and featuring uh, more prominently um, a discussion about the artwork of the Smiths because uh, we could probably go on and on forever on that topic. Now, let me share with you uh, some fun facts about the uh, different versions and variations of Hand in Glove. Um, I showed you at the beginning of the video uh, the very first pressing, which is um, the one with the Manchester address. Uh, the second pressing was the one with the London address. Uh, the difference being that the very first address, the Portland uh, Street address in Manchester, is kind of like the Smith's headquarter. Uh, it was where uh, jo Joe Moss had his clothing store. Uh, and above that was the rehearsal space where the uh, Smith's uh, first started out. Uh, in 2008, um, the record label uh, Rhino, I believe, released um, a box set of uh, Smith's singles, the first 10, I believe, uh, Smith's singles. Um, and unfortunately, the reproduction of the uh, single was not as nice uh, here. Whereas the first one has uh, more of like a silver finish, um, the uh, reissue has more of a gray tone um, and the uh, image is a bit faded and the contrast is kind of like boosted up. So if I hold them next to one another, you can probably tell the difference between the two. Um, then the uh, box set that came out, the complete Smiths that came out, which included all of their albums, all of their CDs and all of their um, seven inch singles had actually a bonus, um, a few bonus uh, singles. Uh, and instead of reproducing the original artwork um, in the box set, they reproduced what was at the time a very rare um, version of the uh, Smith's uh, hand and glove cover, which actually is a misprint. It's a mistake. As you could see, it is the negative version. It was printed kind of like in reverse in negative. Um, and even the back also. Um, so you could see if I hold up the two, one is exactly the uh, negative of the other. And uh, the inside, first I'd like to show you the, uh, the dream that um, Johnny Marr had when he wanted to be signed to Rough Trade. He always envisioned 
uh, their first single to have navy blue labels and silver text with the writing Morrissey and Mar underneath the uh, title. Uh, here's the B-side. In the version that has um, the negative version, they cleverly also made a negative of the labels by reversing it and making it silver um, with blue text. And last but not least, the cover image of uh, Hand in Glove was also used uh, subsequently, uh, not in the 12 inch of Hand in Glove, but in the German version of the 12 inch from uh, Still Ill. Uh, this, uh, although released in Germany, uh, was actually produced in the UK for the German market. Um, so that kind of gives you the rundown of the vinyl versions uh, with one more edition, uh, which is in a, uh, besides uh, releasing a singles box set on vinyl, uh, Rhino also re released a uh, singles, uh, CD singles box set featuring the same singles. Um, and in mini replicas, uh, including the, not just the A side and B side, but really they also included, not in this case, uh, because there was never a 12 inch, they included also the B sides from all the various um, Smith's 12 inch singles and did a mini replica by featuring also the two songs. Um, so I guess that kind of sums it up for this first episode of The Sun Shines Out of Our Behinds. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, what kind of regularity I will have um, in this series. Uh, I guess when the time is right um, and when I've gathered all my thoughts and facts, uh, another video will be coming, hopefully soon. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please uh, leave comments. Um, let me know your thoughts about the Smiths. Um, uh, maybe I missed some fun facts regarding hand in glove please uh do not hesitate to let me know about that but before uh i leave you uh, i want to leave you with a quote from uh the book by johnny marr in that which i believe sums up the essence and the um the feelings that johnny marr had um with regards to the song hand in glove thank you so much for watching So from Johnny Marr's uh, autobiography, Set the Boy Free, I'd like to read a passage regarding um, Hand and Glove. Morrissey then took the mic and held a sheet of paper. We all went into the song for the first time together and bang. It was called Hand and Glove and it was the best thing we'd done. The spirit in the singing was the same as the spirit in the guitar. The song defined us and described the devotion and solidarity of a powerful friendship. It was a declaration and our manifesto. The words were perfect. The music was perfect. My life was perfect.